When you picture the evolution of man, it's easy to imagine that every species came briefly after the last one. However, more recent research and strides in evolutionary biology shocked the world, as we now know multiple species of humans lived together at different times and even interacted together. But how is that even possible? What does it mean for the evolution of man? And how did this confusing phenomenon cause different species of humans to breed with each other? In the story of the evolution of humans, perhaps the most fascinating fact is that multiple species of humans with vast differences actually live together in the same time period, and sometimes even in the same location. See, our earliest ancestors like Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and the earliest known Homo erectus all roamed Africa together, living in places like the Dromolan Paleo Cave system in South Africa. Their relations with each other were complex and revealed an incredible level of diversity in the nature of our early ancestors. However, it didn't end with them, as if we fast forward to the era of Neanderthals, aka Homo neanderthalensis, and the Homo sapiens, we actually see the same thing occur, but on a more complex and baffling scale. See, these two species at the time of their existence were the focal points of one of the most fascinating chapters in human evolution. According to popular theory, the Neanderthals appeared around 400,000 years ago, primarily inhabiting Europe and parts of Western Asia. They were well adapted to cold climates, with robust physiques and large nasal cavities to warm the air they breathed. But here's where things get really intriguing, because Neanderthals weren't just isolated in their own world. Around 300,000 years ago, the Homo sapiens emerged in Africa and eventually spread across the globe, reaching Europe and Asia, where the Neanderthals already lived. At first, it would seem like science fiction, maybe even a case of alternate dimensions. But alas, it is true, as these two species coexisted in Europe and parts of Asia for thousands of years. To make things crazier, this wasn't just a brief overlap. It was a significant period of interaction with some scientists dating their coexistence to span anywhere from 5,000 years to 100,000 years. But how do we know this? One of the strongest pieces of evidence supporting the Homo sapiens and Neanderthal relationships is a recent research conducted by the University of California, Berkeley. The research provided compelling evidence that modern humans, Homo sapiens, coexisted with Neanderthals in Northern Europe for thousands of years. This discovery, based on the analysis of bone fragments found near Rannis, Germany, suggested that Homo sapiens reached the region around 45,000 years ago. This discovery was quite jarring, as it showed that their arrival significantly overlapped with the time Neanderthals inhabited the area. The strangest part of this is the fact that this coexistence presents a fascinating chapter in human history, revealing complex interactions between the two species. See, shocking everyone, the study confirmed that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals lived in the same regions for several millennia, so much so that their extended period of coexistence provided numerous opportunities for interaction, ranging from competition and cultural exchange to even interbreeding. Yep, ancient Homo sapiens and Neanderthals got it on, and we know this thanks to the presence of Neanderthal DNA in the modern human genome which is basically due to the genetic intermingling that occurred during this time. To make things more fascinating, research has shown modern humans outside Africa carry about 1-2% to Neanderthal DNA. But that's not all, because Neanderthals weren't just distant cousins. They were incredibly similar to us, with a DNA similarity of 99.7%. Essentially, they were even closer to us than chimpanzees, our closest living relatives who share 98.8% of their DNA with us. Ultimately, the presence of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans today supports the idea that these two species were not only neighbors, but also partners in a shared evolutionary journey. Besides genetics, the study also took a look at the Rannis site, renowned for its intricate leaf-shaped stone tools, and found it to be an early location of modern human activity in Europe. The Neanderthals were skilled toolmakers creating sophisticated tools known as Mousterian tools. However, when Homo sapiens arrived, they brought their own advanced tools and techniques, such as the origination tools. The discovery of these tools, once thought to be the work of Neanderthals and now attributed to Homo sapiens, ultimately revealed that these two groups even shared technological innovations, 
suggesting a level of interaction that goes beyond mere coexistence. The technological overlap suggested that there might have been a transfer of knowledge and skills, and even a level of cultural exchange between the two species. This cultural exchange is highly possible because the Neanderthals had complex social structures, used symbolic objects, and possibly even had forms of language, which might have been influenced by the Homo sapiens. This interaction essentially shaped a dynamic and unpredictable relationship that would ultimately set the tone of the nature of human evolution and the intricate web of our ancestry. Knowing now that the two species have been together for thousands of years, the question is, what would a child between the two species look like? Let's find out. The love relationship between the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens is actually a tragedy. This is because, try as they might, the chances of creating a Neanderthal sapiens child were extremely thin, and it was due to a flurry of reasons. One of the primary challenges to producing viable offspring between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens was genetic compatibility. See, although they shared a common ancestor, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens evolved separately for hundreds of thousands of years, leading to notable genetic differences. These differences led to various issues in hybrid offspring, including reduced fertility. For example, studies have found that certain Neanderthal gene regions are notably absent or underrepresented in the modern human genome. In fact, the segments on the X chromosome in particular show a significant depletion of Neanderthal ancestry. As such, they suggest that male hybrids who inherit an X chromosome from their mothers and a Y chromosome from their fathers might have been less fertile or even infertile. This was a huge problem as it reduced the chances of these genes being passed on. Another intriguing reason why they could not reproduce lay, once again, in their biology, as there was an alarming incompatibility between their Y chromosomes. This often led to reproductive challenges and miscarriages where Neanderthal males mated with Homo sapiens females. Despite their close genetic relationship, the Y chromosome in Neanderthals, which is passed from father to son and contains crucial genes for male development and reproduction, had certain mutations that were not present in Homo sapiens. These mutations led to issues during interbreeding. Essentially, when a Neanderthal male and a Homo sapiens female mated, the immune system of the Homo sapiens female often recognized these mutations as foreign. As such, it triggers an immune response aimed at protecting the mother from what her body perceives as a threat. Unfortunately, this immune response frequently results in miscarriages, a phenomenon known as hybrid incompatibility, where genetic differences between species cause reproductive issues. Beyond genetic factors, social and behavioral barriers likely played a significant role in limiting interbreeding between the species. See, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens had different social structures, communication methods, and cultural practices, and these differences could have created significant barriers to successful interbreeding. For instance, distinct mating behaviors and social bonding mechanisms might have made sustained interbreeding challenging, not to mention competition for resources and territorial disputes might have further limited interactions between the two groups, thus reducing opportunities for interbreeding. The extinction of Neanderthals around 40,000 years ago is a multifaceted phenomenon that likely involved several contributing factors, one of which was hybridization with Homo sapiens. See, while hybridization itself was not the sole cause of their demise, it played a crucial role in a broader context of ecological, genetic, and competitive pressures. So much so that one of the leading theories is that Neanderthals may have been genetically swamped by the larger population of Homo sapiens. Essentially, as Homo sapiens migrated into Neanderthal territories in Europe and Asia, their populations grew and interbred with Neanderthals. Now, given that Homo sapiens had larger and more expanding populations, the gene flow would have been predominantly in one direction. Over generations, this could have led to the dilution of Neanderthal genetic identity, as their genes were absorbed into the larger Homo sapiens gene pool. This effectively caused Neanderthals to be genetically assimilated Hybridization also likely led to reduced reproductive success for Neanderthals. As mentioned earlier, genetic evidence suggests that male hybrids might have had fertility issues. This reduced fertility could lead to a lower reproductive rate among Neanderthals, as more of their offspring were hybrids with lower fertility. This would contribute to a declining population over generations, eventually leading to their extinction. But that's not all. 
as hybridization might have also exacerbated the competition for resources. See, you have to remember that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals occupied similar ecological niches and relied on similar resources, such as large game animals and plant foods. With the arrival of Homo sapiens, who may have had more advanced technology and better social cooperation, Neanderthals definitely faced increased competition. As such, the interbreeding between the two groups could have led to Neanderthals being outcompeted for resources by the hybrids, who might have had a survival advantage due to a combination of Neanderthal and Homo sapiens traits. Besides external competition, the Homo sapiens had more advanced tools and cultural practices compared to the Neanderthals. And with these advantages in technology and social organization, the Homo sapiens might have had a significant edge in survival and reproduction. Eventually, as interbreeding occurred, Neanderthal populations might have struggled to compete culturally and technologically, leading to a decline in their population over time. Not to mention hybrids with better tools and social structures would have had higher survival rates, further contributing to the decline of pure Neanderthal populations. But their troubles didn't end there, as the migration of Homo sapiens into Neanderthal territories likely brought new diseases to which Neanderthals had no immunity. Of course, the hybrid offspring might have had a better immune response due to the mixing of genetic traits from both species. But this would also mean that Neanderthals without interbreeding might have been more susceptible to these new diseases, leading to higher mortality rates. In the end, this increased susceptibility could significantly reduce Neanderthal numbers, while hybrids and pure Homo sapiens populations continued to grow. Although the chances of having a child were extremely slim and it led to the end of the Neanderthals, the relationship is not without its wins, as it plays a major role in our lives today. The interbreeding between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens has had a profound impact on modern humans. This is thanks to the integration of Neanderthal DNA into the human genome. This integration has influenced various aspects of our biology, health, and even evolutionary history. One of the primary effects of Neanderthal interbreeding is the enhancement of genetic diversity in modern non-African human populations, which carry about 1 to 2% Neanderthal DNA. This genetic diversity has added complexity to the human genome, influencing traits and enhancing the adaptability of Homo sapiens to different environments. For example, some Neanderthal genes affected keratin production, which impacts skin, hair, and nails likely helping early humans adapt to colder climates. Surprisingly, that's not all, as genes related to the skin's ability to handle ultraviolet radiation, which influences pigmentation and vitamin D synthesis, are inherited from Neanderthals. Moving on to our overall health, the Neanderthal DNA has significantly impacted the human immune system profoundly. This is because certain immune-related genes inherited from Neanderthals have been linked to the body's ability to recognize and respond to pathogens. This has had both positive and negative consequences. On the positive side, enhanced immunity to certain pathogens helped early Homo sapiens survive in new environments. On the negative side, these genetic traits also increase susceptibility to autoimmune diseases such as lupus, Crohn's disease, and type 2 diabetes. Moreover, Neanderthal genes influence susceptibility to various conditions, including depression, nicotine addiction, and even skin disorders. Physical traits in modern humans can also be traced back to Neanderthal ancestry. These traits include certain facial features like brow ridges and the shape of the skull, although these traits are generally subtle and vary among individuals. Additionally, Neanderthal genes have also been linked to metabolic processes in modern humans. For instance, some Neanderthal alleles affect how our bodies process fats and sugars, which might have been advantageous in the past, but could influence the risk of metabolic conditions today. Their influence doesn't end there, as they also have a serious influence on modern human brain function and cognitive abilities. According to some studies, Neanderthal genetic variants might affect neurological development and brain structure, potentially influencing behavior and cognition. Though they are long dead, the legacy of our ancestors and their relations has a large impact on who we are today and who we as a species may become in the future. From health to our way of life, their interbreeding created the framework of who we are today. But what do you think about this ancient love story? Let us know in the comment section. 
And while you're at it, why not hit the like and subscribe button to learn more about the past. Until next time.